So today we are going to continue our discussion last time. Uh, we talked about the aggregate sizes and we say that uh, we are going to use sieve number four. Sieve number four, it has opening of 4.75 millimeter. So this sieve is a special sieve because through sieve number four, we are going to be able to differentiate between the coarse aggregate and the fine aggregate. All the aggregate that's going to retain on sieve number four is going to be considered as coarse aggregate. All the aggregate that is going to pass through sieve number four is going to be considered as fine aggregate. So sieve number four, it's very uh, important sieve because through uh, sieve number four will be able to differentiate between the coarse aggregate and the fine aggregate. Also, we have terminology, which is very important in order to uh, 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 define the uh, aggregate in question. We have uh, the uh, maximum aggregate size and the nominal maximum aggregate size. We have two definitions for them. We have the traditional definition and we have the super uh, paved definition so let's start with the traditional definition in simple words the uh, maximum aggregate size it means that the largest uh, aggregate uh, in the sieve of question so let's say that you are going to uh, use a, a certain aggregate from a certain uh, a source then you need to know uh, the uh, maximum aggregate size and in simple words the maximum aggregate size it means that the largest particle of your aggregate okay in simple words but here we have two definitions we have two uh, terminologies we have the maximum aggregate size and we have the nominal maximum aggregate size so according to the traditional definition the maximum aggregate size it means that the smallest sieve through which 100% of the aggregate is going to pass. We have seen that in the lab uh, uh, regarding the uh, sieve analysis. We are going to use uh, a number of sieves in order to know the distribution of the uh, uh, aggregate particles. Then I'm going to place a representative specimen here and I'm going to shake the, uh, the sieve in order to uh, move the particles uh, to to be placed in uh, uh, its own size and through that process uh, maybe for the first sieve here all the aggregate is going to pass assume also for the second uh, sieve here all the aggregate is going to pass so in that case let's say here we uh, the this sieve here retains some aggregate so in this case all the uh, uh, all the uh, uh, aggregate pass through this sieve and pass through that sieve. But which one is the smaller? So this one is smaller than that one. So in this case, we are going, we are going to say that this sieve is the smallest sieve through which the 100% of the aggregate is going to pass. Okay? And also we have the nominal maximum aggregate size. And the nominal maximum aggregate size is defined by the largest sieve that retain any of the aggregate. So largest sieve that can retain any of the aggregate, but generally not more than 10%. So assume I, ret uh, I, I retain aggregate on this sieve and on that sieve and so on that sieve. So uh, which one is going to be the largest? This one is going to be the largest because this one larger than that one and that one is larger than that one. So this one is the largest sieve that can retain the aggregate. Okay. So this one is going to be defined by nominal maximum aggregate size. So according to, to the traditional definition, we have the, uh, the, the maximum aggregate size and we have the nominal maximum uh, aggregate size. Each one, it has its own definition. Now let's move to the super pave definition. The super pave, uh, the maximum aggregate size is, de is defined according to the nominal maximum uh, uh, to nominal maximum aggregate size. So it says here the maximum aggregate size is one size, uh, one sieve size larger than the nominal maximum aggregate size. So this one is going to be just larger than this one. So this definition here 
depends on that definition there. For the nominal maximum aggregate size, it's defined by one sieve larger than the first sieve to retain more than 10% of the aggregate. So this one is sieve, one sieve larger than the first sieve to retain more than 10% of the aggregate. So let's see example so that you can understand the difference between uh, these terminologies. So let's look into this example here. We have uh, aggregate and the aggregate went through the process of sieve analysis here and the, those sieves has been uh, used. We have 3 inch, 2.5 inch, 2 inch, 1.5 inch and 1 inch. And uh, after we finish from the sieve analysis, of course, we uh, manage to determine the percentage passing. So uh, regarding the 3 inch sieve, 100% of the aggregate has passed. Regarding the 2.5 inch, 100% 100 of the aggregate has passed, which means that all the aggregate uh, passed through uh, sieve, uh, 3 inch sieve, and also all the aggregate passed through 2.5 inch. But when it comes to 2 inch, we are, we are going to see here uh, only 95% 90, of the aggregate pass through that sieve, which means that we have a, a retain of 5%. So now we need to know which of these sieves is going to be uh, defined by the uh, maximum aggregate size and which one is going to be defined by the nominal maximum aggregate size. So first we are going to use the traditional uh, definition. So according to, to the the traditional definition, the maximum aggregate size is the smallest sieve through which 100% of the aggregate is going to pass. So in this sieve, 100% of the aggregate has been passed, and in this sieve here, also 100% of the aggregate has been passed. But which one is going to be the smallest? So this one is, is going to be the smallest. So according to the traditional definition, 2.5 inch is going to be defined by the maximum aggregate size. Now let's look to the nominal maximum aggregate size. This one is the largest sieve that retain any of the aggregate. So here we have the first sieve in order to retain uh, a, a amount of aggregate. In this example here, we have 5%. Also this sieve retains some of the aggregate. But which one is the largest? This one, this sieve here is largest, larger than that sieve here. So 2.5 inch is going to be defined by the uh, nominal maximum aggregate size. We can do the same process using the super pave definition. The super pave definition, the maximum aggregate size depend on the nominal maximum size. So first we need to define the nominal maximum aggregate size. So according to the definition here, the nominal maximum aggregate size is one sieve larger than the first sieve to retain more than 10%. So we are going to look to sieves that retain more than 10%. This one less than 10%, this one less than 10%, but this one here is more than 10%. So this sieve here, I need to go one sieve larger. So one sieve larger, it means that 1.5 inch, this one. Okay, so this one here is going to be defined by the uh, nominal uh, maximum aggregate size according to the super pave definition. And uh, in order to know the maximum aggregate size is one sieve larger than the nominal maximum aggregate size. So this one is going to be uh, maximum aggregate size. So through this example here, you will be able to differentiate between the uh, definition of the traditional uh, uh, and the super pave regarding the maximum aggregate size and the nominal maximum aggregate size. Also, it is very important to talk about the aggregate properties. We have many properties for the aggregate. Since we are going to use the aggregate for different uh, application, we are going to use the aggregate in order to uh, produce portal and cement concrete and also to produce asphalt concrete. So it is very important to understand the different properties of the aggregate. We have the shape and the te texture, the shape of the aggregate. Uh, it could be uh, elongated, for example. Uh, we could have uh, uh, a flaky aggregate. We could have round aggregate. We could have angular aggregate. And the texture, it could be rough texture or it could be smooth texture. And also we have the soundness, the soundness represent the, uh, the ability of the aggregate to uh, withstand the weathering. The weathering, uh, it means that the cycles of freezing and doing. And also we have the toughness. We are going to talk about all of these properties uh, uh, in, in details 
we have the toughness. The toughness is the ability of the aggregate to resist the crushing and the absorption. We learned that the aggregate can absorb water. So we need to know how much your aggregate is going to absorb water. And we have the specific gravity. Specific gravity is the density of the aggregate with relative to the density of the water. Uh, it's very important to uh, know the specific gravity. And we have the strings and the modulus. The strings and the modulus of the aggregate is not of a great impor importance. Uh, many uh, ignore the strings and the modulus of the aggregate uh, unless we have a special uh, case. And also we have the gradation, how to uh, conduct sieve analysis test. And we have the deleterious, uh, deleterious materials and cleanness. Sometimes your aggregate is going to contain uh, uh, material that is going to hurt uh, your uh, performance. And also we have the alkaline reactivity. Some aggregate contains silica and silica can uh, react with the uh, cement and that is going to cause uh, a problem for you. And also we have affinity of the asphalt. Uh, the, the aggregate is weak when it comes to uh, water. You know that when rain came over and the action of the course with the water is going to uh, separate the asphalt layer from the aggregates. So let's start with the uh, first one. We have the particle shape and the surface texture. Regarding the particle shape, it could be angular, it could be rounded, it could be flaky or elongated. And regarding the surface texture, it could be rough or it could be smooth. And the, uh, the, 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 the shape and the texture of the individual aggregate particles determine how the material will pack into a dense configuration. So the shape and the texture is going to affect the density of the aggregate. You are going to put the aggregate in a, 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 a cube or in, in, in pocket or something like that. This, the shape and the surface texture is going to affect their density. And also it's going to determine how, how easy you, you are going to move your uh, uh, aggregate from one location to another. And we need to know that uh, in order to get angular particles, that means we need to crush uh, rocks. So through crushing the rocks, we are going to produce angular particles with the sharp corners and rough textures. And also we need to know that angular and rough texture aggregate produce bulk material with a higher stability and strength than rounded and smooth texture. So this one is a round texture and this one is an angular texture. Okay, this one is a round and this one is angular angular it means that it has sharp corners so this one here the angular and rough texture you see here the texture is smooth while the texture here is rough so if i'm going to use angular and rough texture aggregate that means my uh, material is going to, to be uh, bulk material the stability is going to be better and the strength also is going to be better than the rounded and smooth texture Okay, so this is a round, rounded and smooth texture. Uh, however, the angular aggregates will be more difficult to work uh, into place than rounded aggregate. That means the mobility, how easily you can move the aggregate for uh, one location to, other, to, to another using angular and rough texture is going to be difficult. And that is going to, for example, if you are going to use a concrete, you are going to have low workability for the uh, concrete. Later on, we are, we are going to uh, talk in details about the workability of the uh, concrete. Also, we are going to see in the lab how the workability of the concrete is going to help us in order to cast uh, the different structural elements. So here we have angular uh, uh, aggregate. Here we have rounded aggregate. We have lucky. We have elongated. And also it could be uh, flaky and elongated and also uh, we could have uh, here we have a real picture for angular aggregate and here we have real picture for rounded aggregate so how do i know uh, the uh, uh, the particle is a flat how i'm going to consider the the flat the the, the aggregate as as flat uh, aggregate or elongated aggregate or flat and elongated aggregate we are going to uh, do that through the dimension. We are going to say that this dimension here is the largest dimension, 
and this one is the smallest dimension and this one is the middle dimension in order to say that I have a flat particle we are going to say that the ratio of the middle dimension to the smallest dimension is going to exceed 3 to 1 so the percentage of this dimension to that dimension should be more than 3 to 1 in that case we are going to say that we have a flat particle and if it's elongated in this case we are going to uh, compare the middle dimension to the longest dimension so the, ra the ratio here between the longest dimension to the middle dimension is going to be more than 3 to 1 and if it's flat and elongated in that case the uh, largest dimension is going uh, the ratio between the largest dimension and the smallest dimension should exceed uh, 5 to 1 so through those ratio uh, I can say that this uh, uh, particle is it flat or elongated or it's flat and elongated uh, now we talk about the uh, shape of the uh, aggregate also it's very important to know how we can define the texture of the coarse aggregate let's say that I have uh, a representative sample of aggregate and I need to know whether this aggregate is angular uh, is the uh, angular aggregate or it is smooth aggregate or in other words I need to understand whether the aggregate is uh, uh, rough or it's, it's smooth so I'm going to take a representative sample here and I'm going to uh, uh, count the percentage of the particle with and with two more than crushed uh, faces. So I'm going to look to this one, for example, I'm going to look for uh, uh, crush faces. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to count, count them uh, and I'm going to put them in a percentage. So for example, for this representative sample, the aggregate with 100% angular faces. While this one here, we have aggregate with some non-angular faces, not like this one. So in order to know whether the texture is rough or smooth, I'm going to talk, uh, I'm going to take a small uh, representative and I'm going to count the number of the crushed faces. According to that, I'm going to put them in a percentage. Now, I can't do that when it when it comes to coarse aggregate but what about the fine aggregate how I'm going to know that I'm going to have angular particles or round particles so in order to do that I'm going to determine the um, compacted voids content of the a sample of the aggregate for example here I put the aggregate into a container and this aggregate here round aggregate into a container then I'm going to determine the voids inside the container for this case and for that case. If it's angular particles, that means the uh, uh, percentage of the voids is going to be more than the round uh, aggregate. So here, the percentage of the voids, since it's angular, that means I'm going to have uh, a larger voids than the round aggregate. So for that process, I will be able to, to know uh, uh, the angularity and the uh, uh, and the roundness of the uh, fine aggregate. Uh, also, one of the one of the uh, important properties of the aggregate is the soundness and the durability. And the soundness it means that the ability of the aggregate to withstand weathering. Okay, we call this soundness or durability of the aggregate. So, what does it mean the withstand of the weathering? you know that uh, aggregate it has voids right so in cold weather uh, the of course the voids going to be filled with the water and if you are going to uh, have concrete in cold regions then the water inside the voids of the aggregate is going to freeze and we know that if the water is going to freeze that means the, the volume is going to increase and the increase in the volume that is going to generate stresses and that stress can fracture the stones okay so we need to know how much the aggregate can uh, uh, withstand these cycles of freezing and zooming so in the soundness test we are going to simulate the weathering these cycles of freezing and zooming 
by soaking the aggregate in a sodium sulfate. So I'm going to take a representative sample with a minimum mass specified gradation. Then I'm going to place the aggregate inside this basket here and I'm going to put the uh, uh, sodium sulfate for 16 hours. The aggregate is going to be soaked for 16 hours in a sodium sulfate, then it's going to be dry for four hours. And I'm going to repeat the cycle uh, five times in order to simulate the uh, freezing and doing uh, uh, cycles. Then, uh, uh, as a result, you are going to uh, uh, see a fracture into the aggregate, like this one, because of the uh, stresses generated, because, uh, because of the stresses in generated inside the aggregates here. So you are going to lose some of the mass. So the mass here is more than the mass there, because here we lost some of the small particles of the aggregate. So we are going to uh, determine the loss. The loss is going to be the mass before the test minus the mass after the test. And uh, according to the loss, we are going to uh, know uh, how much the aggregate is going to withstand weathering. Also, we have the uh, toughness and the abrasion resistance. This one here is the ability of the aggregate to resist the damaging effect of a load. And this one is related to the hardness of the aggregate particles and is described as the toughness or the abrasion resistance. We know that since we are going to use the aggregate, especially in order to uh, pave roads using the asphalt concrete, we know that the aggregate must resist crushing degradation and disintegration during construction and traffic load. So it's very important for the aggregate to resist those uh, 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 properties. In order to do that, we are going to use the Los Angeles abrasion uh, test. So this test here uh, is called Los Angeles abrasion test. In this test, we are going to place, first we are going to take a representative sample and this sample should retain on a certain C. So after I took representative sample, this sample should retain on a certain C, all the amount. Then I'm going to use the uh, Los Angeles device there. We have rotating drum and we have steel spheres. I'm going to place the aggregate inside the rotating drum and I'm going to place with them steel spheres. Then I'm going to close the rotating tram and we are going to rotate the tram for about uh, 500 revolutions with steel balls. So here we are going to rotate the drum with steel uh, spheres and with the aggregate. Then what will happen? The steel is, will, will try to crush the stones or the aggregates inside the rotating drum. So as a result, we are going to find something li like that. We are going to have smaller uh, uh, pieces here. Remember, before we conducted the test, those uh, uh, aggregates retain on a certain sieve. Let's say that those aggregate retain on uh, uh, sieve number four. Then after the test, we are going to have smaller particles. Then I'm going to put the aggregate again on sieve number four. Then those small particles is going to pass through that sieve which means that I lost, I'm going to lose a uh, uh, amount, uh, a mass uh, of the particle. Then I'm going to determine the loss. The loss is going to be the mass of the original here minus the mass of the final. Okay. And because of the loss here, you are going to, uh, uh, you are going to have a percentage for the loss. So according to that percentage, I'm going to say how much the aggregate stuff or or weak. Also, it's very important to talk about the uh, absorption. We know that the aggregate is chemically inactive, which means that the aggregate is, going, is not going to react with the water chemically. But the aggregate can capture water, and that because of the 
uh, uh, voids inside the aggregate. We know that the aggregate can absorb water because it contains a voice, a voids inside uh, its structure. And aggregate absorption must be evaluated to determine uh, the appropriate amount of water to mix into the concrete. So if you are going to use the aggregate in order to produce concrete, you are going to use a certain amount of mixing water. But in order to uh, have uh, uh, the, uh, good, quality of the, uh, good quality of the aggregate, I need to know how much the aggregate is going to absorb water. Because if you put your specific amount, and let's say that the aggregate it has a large uh, ability to absorb water, then you are going to be in a big trouble. So we need to know the four moisture condition states for the an, ag an aggregate particle. So we have four conditions for the uh, aggregate particle. Like you can see here, here we have a, a particle of aggregate. And here we have voids. The voids could be permeable void or impermeable voids. If it's permeable voids, that means uh, it can uh, uh, capture water. If it's impermeable voids, that means it cannot uh, capture water. OK? So we have four conditions for the aggregate. It could be the first condition, the aggregate could be bone dry. If the aggregate is bone dry, it means that the aggregate contains no moisture. So here we don't have any moisture at all. And in order to do that, I need to put the aggregate into the, into the oven. OK? The only way to make sure that I, we don't have any moisture, we are going to place the aggregate into an oven. The second condition is the air dry. In the air dry, you are going to find a water uh, here, but the water is not going to completely fill the voids. So the voids is going to be partially filled by the water. We call this air dry. So in air dry condition, the aggregate may have some moisture, but the saturation state is not quanti uh, quantified. Number C, we have the saturated surface dry, SSD. In this case, we are going to uh, see that the voids has been fully filled with the water. But we don't have water on the uh, outer surface. So in saturated surface dry condition, the aggregate voids are filled with moisture, but the main surface area of the aggregate particle is dry. So this one here is dry while the voids are uh, completely filled with water. The last condition is the moist aggregate. In the moist aggregate, all the uh, 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 voids has been filled by water, and also we have water on the surface of the aggregate. So we have four uh, uh, moisture condition states for an aggregate particle. So the aggregate particle, it could be bone dry, or could be air dry, or could be saturated surface dry, or it could be moist. Then according to those conditions, I'll be able to determine the moisture content. So the moisture content, it could be determined by the weight of the moist minus the weight of the dry over the weight of the dry. So for example, let's say that I need to determine the moisture, con uh, the moisture content for the bone dry, for this case. So in this case, the uh, W moist is the same as W dry. So I'm going to have W dry minus W dry over W dry, which means that the moisture content for the bone dry is going to be zero. We don't have any moisture content. Let's say that I need to determine the moisture content for air dry. So in this case, I'm going to weigh the particles with water like that. And I need also to weigh the particles without water. So this one here represents W moist like that. And I need to put this one in the oven in order to get W dry over W dry. So the moisture content show us how much water inside your aggregate. Similarly, I can do that for the saturated surface dry and for the moist aggregate. 
and if you are going to determine the moisture content in case of SSD we have a special name for that we call this absorption so the absorption is defined as the moisture content in the SS, uh, SSD condition so if you determine the moisture content in case number C we are going to call this absorption okay and uh, you, if you are going to have case like this one in B case the moist which means that you have excess water in this case you could determine what so called free moisture so free moisture is a difference between the actual moisture content of the aggregate and the moisture content in the SSD condition so you, if you are going to determine the SSD condition and if you are going to determine the moisture content in this case then the difference between this one and that one is the free moisture the difference between case D and case C is the free moisture okay so free moisture is the difference between the actual moisture content of the aggregate this one in this case and the S, uh, SSD condition which is this case so it's very important to learn how to determine the moisture content let's see this example in this example we have a sample of sand fine aggregate with the following properties first here we have the moist mass which is 625.2 gram and here we have the dry mass for the same sample which is 589.9 grams and he show us the percentage of the absorption remember the absorption mean that the moisture content in the SSD condition so now we need to determine first the total moisture content we need to determine the moisture content for a sample of the sand then in part B we need to determine the free moisture content let's look at the first uh, part which is the total moisture content so how to determine that I'm gonna use this formula here MC equal W moist minus W dry over W dry. He gave us W dry and he gave us also W moist. So easily I can uh, use this formula here and get the answer. So uh, the mass of the water, the uh, total moisture content is going to be the difference between the moist mass minus the dry mass. This one minus that one over the dry mass and the percentage came out to be 6% remember here uh, the uh, moisture content came out to be 6% and the absorption is 1.6% uh, uh, that means I have excess water on the surface of the aggregate which means that I'm going to have free moisture content that why, uh, that's why he asked about to determine the moisture content and the moisture content is the difference between this uh, value and that value here the moist aggregate minus the absorption so uh, the uh, moist is 6% and the absorption is 1.6 so 6 minus 1.6 came out to be 4.4% okay this is how we can determine the free moisture uh, okay also it's very important to understand the specific gravity uh, uh, remember in the first lab we determine the specific gravity and because that we have four moisture conditions we have a b c and d that means we are going to have uh, five uh, types of specific gravity so we are going to have four types of specific gravity and they are going to define based on how voids the aggregate particle are considered we are going to have bulk dry we are going to have bulk saturated surface dry and we are going to have apparent specific uh, gravity okay uh, we have four types but the uh, widely accepted one is only three types okay so I'm going to stop here next time I'm going to pick up from there okay I'm going to start from the specific gravity okay uh, very important concept to be understood even though we conduct the specific gravity of the aggregate we have done that last time we determine the specific gravity of the aggregate and we should uh, use these formulas here 
we should uh, determine A and B and C. And also I'm going to show you why we should place the aggregate inside the water in order to determine the specific uh, gravity. So now if you have uh, questions regarding the uh, lecture, please uh, ask me.